Hello everybody, my name is Sam and I am uh, the Director of Continuing Education at Pet Desk. And today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the best practices from customer success and how those can be adapted in your average pet clinic. So Pet Desk works with over 1400 practices in the United States. Um, and because we have a full customer success model, we've been able to identify not just how to use that new model to ensure that our clients are retained for as long as possible, but we've come up with ways that we can give that back to the clinics that we service. Customer success at its root was birthed out of uh, the need to continue to get people to subscribe to the things that we're offering, right? So in a world where I can get Netflix or Hulu or other uh, services that offer me streaming options, um, customer success is the idea that as much little nuggets of joy and things that you can do to give to your client in between subscriptions in order to make sure that they keep subscribing to your service, the better. And so customer success is basically proactive um, customer support. That has traditionally been an industry that focuses on client service and taking a customer success mindset fits perfectly because when we look at our client base, um, people are coming into the clinic once, maybe twice a year, right? And that's a reoccurring thing for the lifetime of that pet. So the more that we can do to ensure that they not just continue to come back to us versus going somewhere else, but getting the most out of the time that they do have in the clinic, so as, as many services as possible with the clinic, the better. And that's where customer success comes in. So one of the most important things of customer success is just ensuring that you're getting the information to your clients that's important to them. And that's where data collection is going to be the number one thing you can do to ensure customer success. If you're not collecting cell phone numbers and email addresses of your clients, um, getting them on an app if you have one, then you're not giving them the opportunity to receive the information from your clinic through the channels that they probably pay attention to with other businesses or their friends and family. So highest on the list is, is engaging your clients and in order to do so, that means collecting the valid information um, to reach them in the first place. This is a task that on its own is really difficult. Um, we know that staff members at a vet clinic are wearing a lot of hats and so to just say collect more cell phones and collect more emails is not realistic to somebody who already feels like they're juggling a lot and that's true. So using tools that enable the staff of a vet clinic to um, easily understand when and who is, you know, sorry, which clients are missing information and when to collect it is going to be really important. Um, and staff empowerment is, is something that's done through both the leadership that you have in your hospital, but also the tools that you're utilizing. So making sure that you've got a proactive way to uh, see the information missing and collect it as clients are coming through the door. Um, once these two things are taken care of, uh, a loyalty program is a way to kind of harmonize those engagement points and make sure that a client is, is aware of the services that are offered and eager to come back to utilize those services. So having a loyalty program changes the mindset in a client, uh, not dissimilar to how we want to change the mindset of our service representatives to be more proactive, reach out to clients before they decide to subscribe to a different uh, you know, streaming service, uh, but also to, to do the same for uh, the pet parents in between visits. So because as a pet parent, I might only come to the clinic twice a year, Making sure that I go home with points for the dollars I spend gives me the thought of how can I come back and spend those points, right? What services are offered um, that I'm not currently utilizing or how can I spend more money at the clinic while I'm there? Um, and this is just a great way to ensure that they're thinking proactively about your clinic, making them feel more engaged um, for those 363 days that they're not in person with you with that great customer care you already give. Uh, so those are three tips um, that you know, pretty much any vet clinic could utilize in order to see more success with their client base and ultimately have better retention and lifetime value. So thank you for listening.